Hello everybody and welcome back to the Secret Processing Playlist. The main topic of this video is windowing and we are going to divide this lecture in two parts. In the first part we will define what is windowing and how we can implement this technique in Compose. While in the second part we will spend some time to discuss how to select a good window and to have a look at the performance of different windows in frequency analysis. To follow and understand this lecture, it's necessary that you have a good understanding of what leakage is. In case you don't know what it is, or if you want to revise it, please have a look at the specific leakage video. Moreover, it's useful that you are familiar with FFT and PSD. You will not be asked to compute them, because we will provide you the function to do that. But it's important that you know what it represents. However, if you wish to deepen your knowledge about FFT and PST, you will find two dedicated videos. Now we are ready to start. Let's move to the first part of this lecture. What is windowing? Windowing is a technique to reduce the desired effect of leakage, which we remind is the spreading of the frequency content of one bean into adjacent beans. This technique consists of multiplying the signal in the time domain by what is called a window function. A window function is a function which has the following general properties. It is zero valued outside of some chosen interval, which is the position time. It is normal symmetric around the middle, where the maximum is located. And it is usually tapering off from the middle. Hence, the aim of the windowing is to modify the original signal in order to get a periodic signal and smooth out the sharp discontinuities which can arise from the finiteness of our acquisition time. And in this way, the reduction of leakage is achieved. In literature, there are a lot of window functions, and in Compose Signal Processing Library, you will find some of them ready to be used. So, let's see how we can implement windowing in Compose. Firstly, we define our sampling frequency and the time array. After that, we define our signal, which is a cosine wave at 12 hours with amplitude of 3. And let's plot it. Then we define our window using a compose built in function. And this is as easy as one line of code. We are going to use the built in function to generate a hand window. The inputs of this function are the number of samples of the signal and a control string to specify the periodic option, since we are going to perform an FFT later. Let's plot it. As mentioned before, we get a function which is symmetric around the middle and it's tapering off from the middle so that it smoothly approaches to zero value at its edges. To complete the winning operation, we just need to multiply together the signal and the window. And this is an element-wise multiplication. And this is what we get. Finally, let's compute the FFT of both the original signal and the window at one. To do that, we leverage a user-defined functions that take as inputs the signal and the name of the window, in case we agree with it. And let's plot it in a dB scale. We see that the FFT we get from the original signal is exactly what we are expecting. One single peak with an amplitude around 10 dB. Instead, in the case of the window at the signal, we get more frequency lines. And also we are underestimating the amplitude at 12 Hz frequency mean. So why are we applying windowing if we get a worse FFT? Well, in this case, we have been extremely lucky in selecting the acquisition time so that our spectrum wasn't suffering at all from leakage. Let's try to change the frequency of our signal to 12.5 Hz and rerun the script. Now we can visualize the benefit we are getting from applying the window. For the regional signal, we can see that the leakage is affecting the whole spectrum, while in the window and signal, it has been reduced to a narrower range of frequency beams. Moreover, this time we get a better amplitude estimate in the window and signal. Let's see in fact what is happening in the time domain. And to do that, let's extend our signal by periodicity. We are leveraging a user-defined function called repeat plot which takes as input the signal and the number of times we want to repeat it. We can see that, thanks to the windowing, we are smoothing out the discontinuity which is occurring when we move from one period to the other, which is the cause of leakage. 
One last thing I want you to notice is that with windowing, we are not solving the problem of the proper frequency being low. In fact, if we look at the x-axis of the f of t, we don't have a frequency being at 12.5 Hz, which is the frequency of our signal. Now, before moving to the second part, let's make some important considerations. The first one is that even if we believe we are not applying any window to our signal, when we are computing the FFT, indeed, we are enforcing it to be periodic over the acquisition time. Hence, this is equivalent to apply a rectangular window. The second one is that with windowing, as we have seen in the example, we are reducing leakage, but we are not solving the problem of the frequency resolution. This problem can be solved only increasing the acquisition time. The third one is that applying windowing, we are modifying the signal in time domain. How does this affect the FFT? It can be seen that the effect of modifications introduces smaller with respect to the leakage of the unwindowed signal. Moreover, there are correction factors that can be used, for example, to preserve the energy content of the signal. And for example, the composed p welch function, which is used to compute the PST, is automatically applying these correction factors for us. The fourth and final one regards the choice of the window. How do we choose the proper window? The choice of a window depends on the application, and experience play a big role here. But I will try to give you a few positive criteria to do that, and this leads us to the second part of this lecture. Let's have a look at the frequency response of our window. Some of the important parameters which defines a window are the main lobe width, the peak side lobe level, and the side lobe roll-off rate. The main lobe width regulates the spectral resolution and the amplitude accuracy, while the peak side lobe level and the side lobe roll-off rate is regulating the leakage. Hence, a narrow main lobe means a good spectral resolution, which is the ability to distinguish close frequency components, while a small peak side lobe level and a high side lobe roll-off rate mean a great leakage reduction. The choice of the window is usually driven by a trade-off between these parameters. And at this point, maybe many of you might feel kind of satisfied with this quality criteria. Well, there is a good news for you. In most cases, the N window is the right choice, since it's a general purpose window. Now, let's see in practice what we have been talking about, and let's run this up in Compose. In this app, there are two plots, one on the left and one on the right. In the one on the left, we will plot the signal in time domain. And the signal is made up of two sine waves, whose frequencies and amplitudes can be changed through the sliders. Instead of the plot on the right, we will plot the PST and the FFT. We can switch from one to the other using the checkbox to the FFT. We can also decide to use a DB scale. Finally, through the radio buttons, we can select different windows. When we select one of them, its frequency response, as well as its domain representation, will show up. Let's compute the FFT of this signal with the rectangular window. Now, let's switch to the hand window. The FFT computed with a rectangular window is better, but just because the signal is not suffering from leakage. So let's change the frequencies. Now we can see the leakage, and if we switch to the hand window, we can see that the leakage is reduced. This is true because if we look at the frequency response of the window, we can see that the peak side lobe level is lower and the side lobe roll of rate is higher. And this is of course true also for the Blackman window. And now let's see the effect of the main lobe width, and to do that, let's choose two close frequencies. We can see that. Even if there is leakage, with a rectangular window we are able to visualize two peaks. While these two peaks are smoothing out and vanishing at the end, if the main lobe gets wider. So if we select the end, the black man, and the flat top window. This is because the spectral resolution of the window decreases. So the natural question is, why and when do we have to use a window with a wide main lobe? To understand it, let's consider a singular sine wave. 
and let's select the AND window and let's vary the frequency from 4 to 6 hertz. Now, let's do the same for the flat top window. Have you noticed anything? Okay, let's rewatch it. We can see that with the flat top window, the variation of the amplitude of the frequency being closest to the frequency of the signal is almost not changing, no matter if we have or not the proper frequency beams. Hence, this type of window is used in those applications where amplitude accuracy is important. And of course, we can use correction factors to get the right amplitude. That's all I wanted to show you in this video. You will find all the material of this lecture in the Model Based Development Forum. I also invite you to use this forum to post any questions you might have on this lecture, and I will be glad to answer all of them. And also, feel free to use this forum to post any question you might have while using Compose. And lastly, and maybe also more important, don't hesitate to share your achievements in Compose. The whole community will benefit from it. See you in the next video.